So what is the Thorpe Ziegler condensation? Well, in short, it is essentially just a Dieckmann, um, but with the introduction of some nitrile groups. And the Dieckmann we know is just the Claisen, but in a cyclic form. And so with these, um, with these reactions, the Claisen, Dieckmann, and the Thorpe Ziegler, they're not all really different. They're all going to include doing the same things. It's just adding their own little touch to it. And so we're going to go ahead and go through the Thorpe Ziegler. And what exactly would that look like? Well, uh, so we're using nit nitrile groups. So just draw in some nitriles with some carbons in between them. And that's fine. Uh, I know I'm going to do something with a an acidic proton because that is the theme with these condensation reactions. So now let me introduce just some base. Uh, for this I'm going to use hydroxide. It's a nice strong base and it's going to see this acidic proton. It'll pull off that proton. When it does that the electrons will go onto that carbon. So we are now at this intermediate. And those electrons on that carbon are in a high state of energy and so they're going to want to go somewhere. And um, if you want to take a guess, go ahead. I'm going to clean up the board just a little bit and plan ahead perfectly here. And that might be a hint. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to migrate those electrons uh, to this carbon. And again, we said it was similar to the Dieckmann. Uh, and so this is kind of where that cyclization happens. And nitrogen has to take that extra pair of electrons when we do this. So what do we have now? If we're, if we're numbering everything, this is one carbon, two, three, four, and this is our fifth. So we're looking at a five carbon ring. So I'm just going to draw some generic ring. Just like that. And now on one of the carbons, I had a, a nitrile group. And then that connected to another carbon that had, uh, had this nitrogen to, um, to its fifth carbon that now only has uh, two bonds to it. And so from that, I'm getting this. Now from there, uh, oops, and there is that extra pair of electrons on that nitrogen. Now from this part, we have some water floating around solution. Um, so there is our, our water. And now we're just going to do a proton transfer just like this and that will leave us with this intermediate and now since we did that proton transfer if you're thinking about what we have in solution in the back of your head you should remember that pulling off proton from water uh, creates hydroxide creates hydroxide And so uh, you can kind of see where this is going. We have um, an enamine, or I'm sorry, an uh, imine. We have an imine, and we have uh, some basic condition. And so uh, we are going to end up tautomerizing. And I won't go through the tautomerization. Um, I see. Uh, I see an acidic proton. Let me do this do it in white again. There's an acidic proton right here because it is next to a nitrile group. And so our base is going to come pull off that proton. When it does that, the electrons are going to flop down and just do this kind of chain reaction sort of thing to get us to our next intermediate. And now, I'll get that to hold on. And now again, what do we have in solution? Well, we pulled off a proton. 
uh, using hydroxide, which formed us water again. So it's a repetitive cycle just to get to this part. But uh, once we are here, this is the complete end. Uh, this is the Thorpe. <laughs> the Thorpe Zeigler, and we end up with our enamine, and I'm going to go ahead and write that, the ending result. We end with some enamine, and then some, some nitrile group. Um, and there is a name for this whole entire uh, product that you get from the Thorpe Zeigler, and that is the en amino nitrile. So the en amino nitrile. And that's just a combination of our two functional groups that we have um, in this final product.